that this Assembly takes note of the proposed changes to the Flags Regulations Northern Ireland 2000 as set out in the Draft Flags Northern Ireland Amendment No. 2 Regulations 2020. Thank you. Thank you. I call Keith Buchanan to move the motion on behalf of the Business Committee. I beg to move. Thank you. And, uh, the Business Committee has agreed that there will be no time limit for this debate. The proposer will have up to five minutes to propose a motion and up to five minutes to wind. All other speakers will have three minutes. So I call Mr Buchanan to open the debate on the motion. Point of order. Point of order. Um, I'd be interested to know, Mr Speaker, under what standing order members are being restricted to three minutes. Standing Order 17 relates to speeches in the Assembly. 17.4 says the Business Committee can, shall consult with the Speaker in order to establish the total time to be allocated in each debate. It does not bestow on the Business Committee the power to limit the speakers to three minutes. It only bestows on the Business Committee in consultation with yourself to set the totality of the time. So where is this three-minute limit coming from? Well, the Business Committee con considered the um, proposal. Meryl will be aware that the Secretary of State has writ wrote to myself, and uh, the Business Committee then took a decision to table a motion for take note. The unusual and interesting situation is that whilst legislation in this House is dealt with by way of a no time limit on the speaking rights. Um, this is not legislation which has been dealt with by the, or processed by the Assembly itself. So the Business Committee, and I am satisfied the Business Committee ta took a proper, a proper and appropriate decision to leave the debate untimed, of course, but limited the time to uh, three minutes for all other members. And I am satisfied that that's, that's in line with the uh, our rights to do that. Okay. And we'll always review these things, of course, if uh, we think that there is something wrong with the decision which has been taken and in light of any member's contributions, including your own, and we can do that in due course. Thank you. Thank you. Open the debate, please. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Flags Regulation Northern Ireland 2000 made provision in relation to the flying of flags at government buildings on specific days. Under the Flags Northern Ireland Order 2000, it is the Secretary of State who has the power to make and amend such regulations. However, in doing so, the Secretary of State is required to refer a draft of the proposal, proposed regulations to the Assembly. The Assembly must then report to the Secretary of State the views expressed in the Assembly on the proposed regulations by the date specified by the Secretary of State. Following this, the Secretary of State has a duty to consider this report. The Secretary of State may amend the proposed regulations as a result of the report before laying the regulations for approval by resolution of each House of Parliament. The Business Committee will, was made aware that the Secretary of State had written to the, sec, the Speaker on the 1st of September 2020. The Secretary of State advised that he intended to amend the Flags Regulation Northern Ireland 2000 to implement the New Decade New Approach Agreement commitment to bring the list of designated flag flying days from Northern Ireland government buildings and courthouses into line with the designated days. This means increasing by three. The Secretary of State also advised he intended to amend the list of specific specified government buildings from which he would, the flag would be flown. A copy of proposed regulations and accompanying explanatory memorandum were circulated to all members last week. The Secretary of State has asked for the Assembly to be able to consider these draft regulations and provide a report of the Assembly's views by the 14th of September 2020. The Business Committee did not take a view on these proposals in line with previous practice. The Business Committee instead agreed to bring forward today's motion in order to create an opportunity for members to consider the draft regulations. An official report of this debate will record the views expressed in the Assembly on the proposal. With your permission, Mr Speaker, I now wish to make some remarks as an Assembly member from Adolster and Democratic Union's Party Chief. The DUP regards the display of our national symbols, including the national flag, as a basic but central expression of pride in Northern Ireland's Britishness and membership of the United Kingdom. We have consistently supported its display from public buildings on a 365-day basis. This, we feel, is entirely appropriate for major civic buildings such as Parliament buildings and the Belfast City Hall and reflects increasing practice seen elsewhere in the United Kingdom. Therefore, although we welcome the addition of three designated days and two government buildings under these draft orders. As committed in New Decade New Approach, it does not address overarching concerns we hold about the general direction of travel. Nowhere else in the United Kingdom has 
designated flag legislation. The fact remains that it is unwieldy and unfit for purpose. DCMS have for several years already recognised the three royal bursaries we are today adding to the designated day list. Due to the absence of political agreement or corrective steps by the Secretary of State, State in Northern Ireland were left behind. Mr Speaker, it is wrong that Northern Ireland faces such upheaval in simply keeping place with the expression of our Britishness elsewhere in our nation. It is unjust that our nation pride is subject to the veto of certain political parties. We on these benches seek a fundamental reform of these structures. As we approach the centenary of our foundation of Northern Ireland, we will be strongly making the case to Her Majesty's Government for greater assurances that the celebrations do not fall victim to the inflexibility of the current legislation. The Northern Ireland Secretary may be required to give due regard to the Belfast Agreement before making any changes, but we are clear that a failure to act in itself violates the constitutional provisions already set out in that agreement. The flying of the national flag is not a divisive or disproportionate. Its display from public or civic buildings does not invoke fear or division. It simply recognises Northern Ireland's constitutional status and gives due regard to the principle of consent. I would encourage all members who share our position on these matters to passionately make their views known during this debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member and I call Emma Sheeran. Like most people, um, on a Monday in the middle of a global pandemic, the Union flag isn't uh, my top priority today, and I suppose it's fair to say that Union flag is never my top priority. As Irish Republicans, additional flying days for the flag are never going to be something that we in Sinn Féin will celebrate. And indeed, the presence of the Union flag above Parliament buildings and other civic spaces, at one time intimidating to people who identified as Irish and Republicans, is now somewhat tired. I don't feel welcomed when I drive up that hill and I see the red, white and blue flying, but it doesn't threaten my Irishness. I'm confident in my identity. I can be Irish in a place that doesn't recognise me as such, and seeing a union flag doesn't take away from that. That said, respect is an important commodity, and the north of Ireland is contested territory. The dominance of one community over another should be left in the past. It's our belief that there should be parity of esteem for both British and Irish identities here. We should have neutrality or equality when it comes to flags and emblems, either both or neither. Obviously, this is not something that political unionism is ready to accept, and we have seen and heard talk in recent days and weeks hyping up the need for artefacts and memorials to the creation of the state in the lead-up to the centenary of partition. If we're honest with ourselves, anyone can see from a quick walk around this building, around this estate, indeed around this city, that there's no shortage of British imperialism reflected in architecture, in statues and memorials, even in street names. In the current context, I think this motion is at best bizarre and inappropriate and at worst insulting. We're in the middle of a global pandemic where thousands are worrying about their business going bust, being made redundant, balancing and managing the threat of COVID with the need to maintain employment and put food on the table. I will. The motion is being bizarre. The member knows that this is a direct consequence of new decade, new approach, an agreement which her party signed up to support. The member has an additional minute. Thank you, and I thank the member for his input. Um, I'm, I'm coming on to the fact that the British government have got other uh, commitments as per NDNA that they haven't signed up to yet. They haven't implemented. That's why I'm saying it's bizarre. With everything that's going on around us right now, ensuring the increased flying of a flag seems like a strange item to be making the top of the agenda. Of course, the virus that is Brexit is still trundling along in the background of our new normal. And in terms of the British government's failures to honour its commitments as set out in NDNA as in previous agreements, it's a damning indictment that this is something that they're choosing to prioritise. We've been waiting for 22 years for a Bill of Rights for the North, and in our ad hoc committee, we still have members questioning the, members of creating, the merits of creating one. Two pages before this paragraph on flag regulations within NDNA, the British government commit to close engagement with the restored executive relating to our priorities in the next phase of Brexit negotiations. Disregard the fact that the North voted to remain. The fact that three months ago this Assembly voted to support a motion calling on the British to extend the transition period has been ignored, and just last week they actually admitted publicly to their intention to break international law. Considering all the important commitments that the British Government are not honouring, it's nothing short of absurd to me that we're standing here today discussing flags. Gormagath. 
Thank you. And I call Colin McGrath. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the flag regulations that are presented in front of us today are, as has been highlighted, presented as a consultation as they are actually being progressed in another place. We are asked simply to give our opinion on the matter, and that will be considered by the Secretary of State when he takes his decision. Flags are controversial in Northern Ireland. They are often not used for their purpose. They can be a sign of division, and they can be used to create feelings of unease. And I'm always struck by how it is often the intention of the people putting them up uh, not to celebrate, not to create uh, pride, but for negative and unhelpful things like the marking of division of territory and creating a sense of this is our place, not yours. Now, New Decade, New Approach was a difficult document to develop. It was a bit of a pick and mix and something for everyone in the audience. It wasn't so much a deal as a collection of aspirations laced with items that were imperative on one side and not necessarily, uh, but just bearable to the other. But it got this place back up and running and with major issues like nurses pay, health and education reform and then COVID-19, we are better served having this place functioning than not. One item on the NDNA list was this issue of flag flying from uh, additional designated days and at certain designated buildings. This is something important to many in our community. It isn't to me uh, or many of the people that I represent, but it is to others. And in recognition of this being a shared space and a shared place, I am happy uh, to support what is going through today. But I wanted to be clear that, that it is being delivered in the context of NDNA, which contains many more elements to be delivered and ones that I want to see introduced and introduced quickly. We need health service reform. We need to see the medical school at McGee delivered, and I welcome the progress that there is there to date. We need to see the continued reform of these institutions to make them fairer, more democratic and more accountable to the people that we serve. We want to see extra childcare hours for hard-working families and parents to ease the burden on their monthly pay packet. We want to see more social and affordable housing uh, to tackle the unacceptable housing stress that there is here in the North. We want additional accountability for this housing matter too, with a separate outcome in our programme for government on housing to be able to measure its success. These, we believe, are the issues that affect people. They impact on their lives and matters are, that which they want to see progress on. I want to see this place working, the people in it working, and the people that we are here to work for seeing improvements in their lives. So I want to see much more delivered other than just the flags. Thank you. And I thank the member and I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in response to the, the piece of legislation that has been put in front of us um, to acknowledge the sovereignty of our flags. Um, the designated days um, Alliance has supported for many years. It shows respect for people who want the Union flag. It also shows respect for those who do not want the Union flag. But what it does say, and many others have said it here, is that we are a community that appears to be divided. We're actually just one community. We're all from this place, and we want something better. New decade, new approach was that, and we all signed up to it. it is, the designated days has been equality proofed so many times. If I am to be in this chamber, stuck in the middle here with you, then all I would ask is that we show each other respect. The flag is the flag. People want it. People don't want it. It's time for us to move forward. And as others have said here, we're in the middle of a pandemic. A virus is killing our people. We have education that's not being reformed. The Bengoa hasn't been brought through from health. There are a lot of priorities here. While I'm respecting this legislation, and it's only adding three more days, it's adding the birthday of the Duchess of Cambridge, the birthday of the Duke of Cambridge, and the birthday of the Duchess of Cornwall. It's adding three days. That will change, unfortunately, when people pass away and days are removed. When other people are born, days will be added. That's designated days. All I would say to each of us is we have a lot of work to do in this place and can we move on with that? I thank the member and I call Christopher Stolford. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, as has been mentioned by other speakers in this debate, uh, this uh, development arises out of the new decade, new approach, and I welcome it as such. And it, was also, it has also been said 
that new decade new approach did represent a compromise and I accept that there are things that people on that side of the House are going to have to tolerate going through as part of that compromise that they might not like and then there will be things that people on this side of the House are going to have to tolerate going through that they might not be that fussed on either. And politics is the art of the possible and new decade new approach reflected a compromise between the two major uh, political traditions that exist in this community. I think this is a welcome development and I speak as someone who puts a flag on his house during the months of July and August. I do so because I'm loyal to the United Kingdom. I'm a loyal subject of Her Majesty the Queen. It's part of who I am, it's part of my identity and it's important to me and it's something that I value. I value the flag of my country and I want to see it treated with respect and that's why, for example, I don't like to see flags left on lampposts to become tattered rags. The flag of our country should be treated with respect. I welcome the provision uh, of these additional flag uh, days. I welcome the expansion to, um, to other uh, government buildings because I think that's right and I think it's appropriate. Mention was made about the Department for Culture, Media and Sport and, and their list. My understanding of the list that we're now being brought into line with is that that is the minimum requirement or the minimum recommendation from the government in Whitehall in terms of the total number of days. It may be that other days can be added to the list, either on a one-off basis, such as a significant national event, or um, on a permanent basis, if that is so decided. And I have heard some of the comments that have been made. I've sat in the chair where you were, uh, sir, the last time Assembly Commission business was considered. And I think it would be the worst possible thing for us as a community if we descend into the trenches over the issue around the foundation of the state. People are going to have very, very different interpretations of that. And I accept that. But I think if we can show a bit of give and take toward each other, so why shouldn't, for example, on the actual day itself, why shouldn't the flag be on the roof of this building? What, what would that really cost? What would that really hurt anyone to just, on that one-off day, perhaps accede to that request and show a bit of generosity to people who believe different things from you but want to work with you to run the country? Member, time's up. Okay, thank you. And I call Sinead Ennis. Gurm, I get can call you. As my colleague beside me here, um, Emma Sheeran, has said, for some looking in on this debate this morning, there will be a certain and not unjustified sense of frustration that here we are in the middle of a global pandemic with all the Brexit looming and all the other crises that are, that are coming our way. And we're here again talking about flags and emblems. But I think you know, this debate, uh, it's, it's about more than flags. Um, and it's about us deciding what type of society and place we want to live in and how we're going to treat each other. And more importantly, how we acknowledge and respect each other's identities. And I suppose in the context of Brexit, where we've been reminded just recently and yet again of the British government's total and unequivocal lack of respect for Ireland and the legally binding international agreement it signed up to. And with talk now emerging that the British government are manoeuvring themselves uh, to perhaps abandon and renege on major parts of European human rights law, which of course us here in the North, we know only too well the British government has formed in this regard. But it is unsurprising then that the same British government refuses to implement key human rights components of the Good Friday Agreement, agreement specifically a Bill of Rights. The Good Friday Agreement provided for an equality of treatment duty on public authorities, and this statutory duty was explicitly singled out in the agreement to be enshrined within a Bill of Rights, and it said, the formulating of a general obligation on government and public bodies fully to respect on the basis of equality of treatment the identity and ethos of both communities. And the Human Rights Commission, which was tasked with the formation of the bill, recommended in its 2008 advice to the government, public authorities must fully respect, on the basis of equality of treatment, the identity and ethos of both main communities in the North. No one relying on this provision may do so in a manner inconsistent with the rights and freedoms of others. And as my colleague has said earlier, look around this building that we have to come, come and work in every day. And I don't see my identity or my ethos reflected anywhere in this building. Absolutely nowhere. So instead of asking us to celebrate uh, and 
no, I'll, I'll, I'll finish if you don't mind. Instead of asking us to roll out the flags to celebrate the birth of yet another unelected British royal, perhaps a British government in this House might consider Sinn Féin's reasonable proposals on equality and neutrality. Both flags are none at all. I know the Secretary of State has said he will be reading the Hansard report of this debate, so I want to take this opportunity to call on him and his government to reflect on why they have yet to implement a Bill of Rights and their apparent inability to honour international agreements and the commitments that they made in them. The British government need to, and this House as well need to demonstrate that we are serious about a peaceful and progressive shared future for the people on this island, a future that has to be based on equality, parity of esteem, tolerance and respect for all. Thank you, and I call John O'Dowd. Oh, um, thank you, I can call you. Um, I, I was just reading through again the New Deal, New Approach document, uh, which was published by the two governments and which led to the restoration of uh, this institution. And ironically, uh, this section is under the title of the British government's paper, delivering on our commitments. Now, delivering on our commitments from the British government. I think we've seen in recent days what exactly that means. They will cherry-pick on what they want to deliver, and they will deliver what suits them, when it suits them, and sometimes it will never suit them. And that's where the difficulty lies in regards to this, this proposal. And, and this is a take-note debate, uh, and what we'll do at the end of this, we'll vote that we've taken note. That should be in no way interpreted by the Secretary of State or by anyone in this chamber, or anyone beyond this chamber, that we are supporting the notion that we need to fly more flags. Because we don't. What we need to do is ensure that the parts of, of, of the, 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 the paper, which was published by the two governments, uh, which is the responsibility of this assembly, are implemented and implemented in full. And that will cause challenges on either side of the House. But we have to do that. Uh, what the governments do with their commitments, we will see. But they can't cherry pick. And, and, and we've seen this uh, from the British government time and time again. And when you read through uh, what's entitled Annex A, UK government commitments to Northern Ireland, it's as if those of an Irish identity don't exist. And the co guarantors of the Good Friday Agreement, which is the UK government, seem to have forgotten that they have signed up to the Good Friday Agreement, that the institutions are built on the Good Friday Agreement, and that a significant and growing population in this part of the island are Irish and want to be seen as Irish, and they want their identity recognised, and they want their identity acknowledged. But the government does not do that in any part of this document. So uh, what I'm sending out the clear message to you, and for Hansard, is this. Uh, the vote will go through today, but it's not an endorsement of this proposal. And what we have to do as a society is acknowledge that there are different identities in this island, and they have to be uh, acknowledged not only in word, but also in deed, and also in symbolism. Because what flags are about, flags mark territory. Flags are a symbol of power, that you have power in a certain area, or you have control of a certain territory. You can put one above this building, or you can put one on a flag post somewhere. They send out the same message. It's about power. And what we have here is power sharing. So we have to, in terms of our symbols, uh, 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 in terms of our acknowledgement of this society, there has to be equality or neutrality in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To say that flags are a vexed subject in this place would be, uh, would be to understate matters, and no one in this part of the world is ever given to understatement, certainly not in this Assembly. Um, this regulation, as people have said, implements one particular commitment in the New Decade New Approach Agreement signed at the beginning of this year in relation to increasing designated flag days. Mr. Speaker, I want to say two connected things about today's regulation. The first is about respect, the second is about consistency. First, in relation to respect, it cannot be said often enough that Northern Ireland um, is a shared space, and it will continue to be, whatever our constitutional uh, future. Mutual respect cannot simply be a phrase. It must be ingrained in how we think and talk about one another. Our identities our symbols and the space we share. It is often said that we talk far too much about flags and identity. Many of the young people who leave here and cringe at the idea of coming back do so because they feel weighed down by the monotony of debates over symbolism and identity. So it's true that, when we, that we talk too much about questions of flags and identity, but it's also true that we don't talk about them in the right way. 
Too often, we do not speak respectfully about what is valued and precious to others. We are quick to take offence, but slow to see why others might be offended. So it's worth me saying clearly, I respect the Union flag. And I respect the importance of the flag to many people in Northern Ireland, and indeed in this chamber. And in response to what Mr Stalford, my constituency colleague, said, I don't just tolerate symbols of Britishness, or indeed symbols uh, of, uh, of other things. I actively hope I actively respect them. The flag may not command my loyalty, but it should command my respect. If it matters to my neighbours, my, some of my friends and many of my constituents, and indeed many of my Assembly colleagues, it should matter to me. Indeed, for those of us who seek constitutional change on this island, it is incumbent for us to be clear that if we are serious about respect for Britishness in Ireland, it needs to not be in a grudging way, but in a clear and positive way. But to be clear, mutual respect also means that in addition to the um, additional designated flag days, um, we need to have a better approach to unauthorised flag flying in streets and neighbourhoods across Northern Ireland. In many communities, flag flying clearly has the consent, either active or passive, of the people who live there. But in other places, there is limited consent or no consent. Many of my constituents in places like Carrie Duff, Rosetta or Finnehy live in communities that are proud of their integrated nature. They have a multiplicity of identities and constitutional viewpoints, but they also dislike public spaces being used to assert one viewpoint or identity for large parts of the year. And very often, the people who come to put up those flags are not known to them, let alone being accountable to them. I welcome what Mr Stalford said about tattered rags. I think he's completely right. Anybody who cares about a flag, whatever that national flag is, shouldn't want to see it, um, it become a tattered rag that intimidates people. Um, uh, but in the absence of an agreed and consistent approach to regulation, many of these communities feel powerless on this issue. They do not want to remove all symbols of identity. I certainly do not, but rather to have more transparency and accountability over these matters and the ability to have their voice heard. So, the two points are interrelated, Mr Speaker. Respect for tolerance, respect for symbols of identity, but consistency in approach, and that is why we need to see the commission, another part of the Unidecky New Approach, the Commission on Flags and Identity, report to the First Ministers and create a more consistent approach on the interrelated issues of flags. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Justin McNulty. Accommodation can be reached. In the darkest of times, accommodation was reached on flags. In this, term, in this time of turmoil, I recall a different time of turmoil. Tuesday, the 3rd of March, I, along with my teammates, were training in a cut and thrust dog at training session in Davit Park in Lurgan when one of our joint managers, Brian Calvin, was called away urgently because there had just been a double murder in his family bar in Points Pass. In the following days, two great leaders walked the main street and points past together. They quelled anger and they quelled fear by their actions and by their words. Their spirit of accommodation, the spirit of accommodation exhibited by Seamus Mallon and David Trimble in those days, has been shared by everybody in the community in points past. And thankfully, the following month, the Good Friday Agreement was signed. And further subsequent agreements and points passed were brokered by Tom Canavan, God rest his soul, and by Robert Turner. The following year, that same team were in the Ulster final. The local GEA club approached the Orange Order, seeking guidance on where to source bunting, orange and white bunting. I believe the GEA and the Orange Order worked together to take down the, the, the red, white and blue bunting, which was there from the 12th, to erect the, the orange and white bunting for the Ulster final. Thankfully, my team were victorious on that day. But that spirit of accommodation still exists in points past. The community there know we live in a shared home place. That's the, sort of, that's the type of shared home place I want to work towards on this island, a new Ireland of tolerance and respect and ambition. A new Ireland of energy, endeavour, enterprise and equality. A new Ireland where we spill our sweat and no, nobody's blood. Let's all work towards that new Ireland. A new shared home place. Our scatha kela na marin na marin na denya. We rely on each other for shelter. Gurm Ayogut, Kongkula. Gurm Ayogut, and I call George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I wish to welcome the proposals <coughs> which correct mistakes in the original 200 order <coughs> and ensure that Northern Ireland is brought into line with the rest of the United Kingdom. 
in other words, equality for Northern Ireland. I wish to point out, when the original order was made, the Queen Mother was still alive, as was Princess Margaret. With her deaths, there was a net loss of days that the flag could fly. New members were added to the royal family, for example, the Duchess of Cambridge, and her birthday is a day where the flag is flown in celebration. The proposed new arrangements ensure that Northern Ireland can mark that occasion along with the rest of the United Kingdom. Indeed, Northern Ireland will, under the proposals, have three additional days. The proposals recognise that change occurs and a proactive response to changes is essential to ensure Northern Ireland maintains the same statutory days as the rest of the United Kingdom. Mr. Speaker, for many in Northern Ireland, the ability to mark significant birthdays by the flying of our national flag is welcome, both culturally and historically. I sincerely believe these proposals are a positive move and urge the Assembly to support this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I was to call Dolores Kelly, which is not in the chamber. Uh, I call Jim Allister. Thank you. Um, John O'Dowd said that some people seem to have forgotten that they'd signed up to the what he called the Good Friday Agreement. I think that's a message he and his party should take to themselves. Because whatever else the Belfast Agreement uh, can be faulted for, it, inv it involved, we were told, an acceptance that Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Now, if that is correct, then how can it be that there is resistance to the flying of the flag of the United Kingdom on government buildings in Northern Ireland. If there is recognition that we're part of the United Kingdom, then one inevitably follows the other. And instead, what we've had today, particularly from the first Sinn Féin speaker, uh, Ms Sheeran, was bile against all things British and the flag. And yet these are the people who tell us there's a great new dawn awaits us in a new Ireland. And here they are today, happy to take all the privileges of being part of the United Kingdom, bursting to get us out of the United Kingdom, promising a new Ireland, and yet within Northern Ireland they cannot even accept the flying of the flag. Uh, well, I don't think I get extra time, so I think I won't. Uh, and then, the Miss Ennis told us she sees nothing in this building that accommodates her culture. My goodness, I walk out of this building, I walk up the steps from the main hall, and I'm faced with the portrait of an IRA commander responsible for multiple murder of my constituents and others. Coming back to these regulations, I do welcome the fact that they are bringing things up to date. I welcome the fact that the two Sinn Féin ministers for community and finance will now have the Union flag flying from their headquarters, and I welcome the addition of days. But I do say to the Assembly Commission, there is a test coming for respect within this community. The 7th of June is the centenary of the formation of, of the first sitting of the Northern Ireland Parliament. It will show whether or not there is any respect from the Assembly Commission and those who govern this place for the people who want to be part of, North, of the United Kingdom if the flag flies on this building. If it does not, it will be a calculated, deliberate insult to everyone who values their place in the United Kingdom and another confirmation of just what would await us. Member's time, so member's time is up. As to leave the United Kingdom. Thank the member, and I call Jerry Carl. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Clearly, we do have uh, more pressing, pre uh, pressing matters to discuss today in the flying of flags. So, I'm not going to speak for long uh, on this issue. But I do raise to put on record my opposition to the extra days uh, contained within this motion. Uh, I, for one, happen to believe that we, as a society, need to get away from the flying of communal flags. And as a socialist, I certainly do not support the expansion of flying flags in honour and to glorify any monarchy, never mind the British monarchy and the role of uh, British imperialism in Ireland, which, for the record, was not good for any uh, working-class communities uh, in the North. This motion 
on flags, of course, stems from agreements that were signed up to by uh, Sinn Féin and the DUP in the New Decade New Approach Agreement, and in a small way sums up a major problem with the agreement, namely how it doubles down on the two traditions schema where communal forces are elevated in politics and certain sectarian practices are given cover by the law. For example, this agreement uh, on flag flying came alongside a proposal, proposal to create a commissioner whose task will include, uh, and I quote, protecting the Ulster British tradition as if such a thing was an endangered species and not the historic ideology of elites here. So all these things are co connected to the way that this state uh, is the ultimate guarantor and cements sectarianism at the heart of it. Uh, and people before profit, for our part, will continue to be a vo uh, voice for socialist politics inside and outside the chamber and have no truck with this approach. Thank you. Thank you. And I call on Robbie Butler to wind. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> may I may not use the five minutes. Uh, first of all, I'll be speaking on behalf um, of the uh, Commission. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to all the members who have made a contribution. I intend to be very brief in concluding this debate. Uh, the Business Committee's intention in bringing forward this motion today was to give members an opportunity to express its views on proposed amendments to the flag regulations Northern Ireland 2000. The Business Committee, uh, I had spoken on behalf of the the Commission, but I'm actually speaking on the Business Committee. Uh, it's not considered the proposals are taking a view on them as a corporate body, but the Secretary of State only wrote to the Speaker on the 1st of September asking that the Assembly considers these draft regulations, which is what we are about today. The Secretary of State asked for the Assembly to provide a report of its views by today, the 14th of September 2020. Consequently, in order to meet that very tight deadline, the Business Committee was required to ensure that the Assembly had an opportunity to debate those proposals today. Members have now set out their views on them, and on behalf of the Business Committee, I'll not go through those views, although I may pick it up myself. The official report uh, records those views. The Business Committee has been advised, uh, Mr Speaker, that you, the Speaker, will today send a copy of the official report to the Secretary of State, who may then choose to amend the proposed regulations before laying them uh, for approval by resolution of each House of Parliament. So on behalf of the Business Committee, I ask all members to support the motion today, and now I will speak on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party and uh, myself. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I just want to commend all the speakers, uh, firstly, uh, for the matter and tone of the uh, speeches so far uh, on this issue. Flags have, for many years, uh, been an issue of either pride uh, from a union's perspective or a nationalist perspective, depending on the flag that you like, but also been uh, a, a course. Uh, for much angst and many sad debates in this country. But uh, these are regulations which the Secretary of State are bringing before us as part of New Decade and New Approach, which, as was pointed out by a number of the speakers today, uh, is uh, a mixed bag of, of regulations and priorities for much of us. And uh, it's something that we're going to have to show a lot of respect to each other with regard to, to bringing into line. Uh, just with regard to a number of the points that were picked out uh, by some of the speakers today, um, it was moved by uh, Keith Buchanan. Um, and he talked about the, the, the value in the identity to unionists uh, and to that British identity. It's something that I share and I know the Austro Unionist uh, Party share. Um, Emma Sheeran then spoke, and I mean, uh, Emma obviously has um, her, her, her background and, and her pain that she's felt, and the fact that she doesn't feel that her Irish identity has been. Uh, 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 something that's been celebrated, but as someone who is British, I can assure you for 40, 48 years, it's living somewhere which is supposed to be British and part of the United Kingdom. You want to try it from my shoes when people are picking at you all your life from 1972. It's not an easy ride. And when we come to something that I'm proud about, which is that flag, I understand the need to be respectful um, and, and, and to fly it appropriately. Um, and I don't see that as, as someone who knows to anybody's uh, identity at all. Um, he's not here now, but, but, but Colin there, um, he, he talked, he was actually very good, he talked about it, uh, sometimes controversial and sometimes has negative connotations, but he at least showed the respect that, uh, that has been probably missing at some times over this past few years um, with regard to the institutions not being running. But again, he showed that need, that, uh, which was probably born out of the Good Friday Agreement, where, where we actually all have to move a little bit and show that respect. 
So that was, that was welcome. Kelly Armstrong talked about the sovereignty of the flag. She talked about the, also the priorities that needed to be addressed as well. So whilst this uh, debate may be important to some of us and less important to others, there are other priorities uh, that need to be talked about. Christopher Stolford uh, spoke actually really well today. I give him a compliment. I don't think he's here. But he did today speak about flags and the need to fly them appropriately. He talked about his distaste for tattered flags and lampposts. And I don't think there would be too many in this House, including myself, that would disagree with that statement. And he talked about the need uh, to embrace the centenary and show generosity, which obviously works both ways. Sinead Ennis then spoke about her frustration on uh, what type of society and how will we treat each other. But that's, uh, that's something, that's a mirror we need to hold up to ourselves as, as well, I believe. Um, moving on to the, the final comments. Um, Matthew O'Toole talked about respect and consistency, which I would echo. Justin McNulty uh, in, in Irish spoke about relying on each other for shelter. I can't do it in Irish, Justin, but thank you for those, those words. And Jim Allister then reminded us of the need next year when the centenary celebrations will appear that we need to show that generosity. Um, the final comment will go to Jerry Carroll. This is why I will not be a socialist, because if socialism cannot uh, show anything but opposition um, and is, if has a failure to show tolerance or accommodation, then, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, that will not be for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, the question is that the motion standing on the order of paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Thank you. Would members take a raise for a moment to be changed the table? Thank you.